Hello and welcome to 421. My name is Maisel Bake and I'm the Programs and Community Initiatives Manager at 421 Arts Campus. And today I will walk you through our exhibition, Network Culture. Network Culture marks a really important moment for us here at 421. The exhibition Network Culture celebrates the work of 13 artists here at 421 Arts Campus. We have expanded our spaces and thus have transformed our residency program from a homebound residency to a residency that supports artists by giving them studio spaces. We decided to take this moment to look at the past three years of our homebound residency and sit through the different works to pull out the common thematics, the different questions that the artists um, and different ways of practice may have looked at. Um, our residency program has always been envisioned as an on-site residency with studio spaces. However, as it was scheduled to launch in 2020, we did have to pivot along with the rest of the world to find alternative ways to support our creative community. We took a moment to really think about what is a residency and what type of support does a residency give artists. What we have zoomed in on is that a residency is about providing opportunities for conversation, for happy mistakes, for different discoveries that come when you are not under the pressure to produce an outcome. So this was and remains the core of the residency, that it is there to support a sustained creative practice. The past three years of the Homebound Residency brought together over 20 artists, uh, curators, writers, designers, um, supported their development and the growth of certain projects that they've worked on. Today, we will take a look at 13 of these supported projects. First on our tour is artist Ravi Bhatia. Rugby was part of the second cohort of the Homebound Residency and had curatorial support from Irene Shadi. Rugby's practice has always been really exciting as she delves into ideas such as rituals and religion and the different structure that brings people together um, and explores them through material philosophy. In the work that we have here, Rugby can see through about uh, rituals of cleaning, purity, and evolution, and things about it in parallel to different uh, processes and um, uh, social structures that we have developed beautifully. Um, one question that Rogby brings up often is, um, where does the uncleanliness go when you wash it away? Her work is a three-part exploration of the parallels and overlaps between traditional religious economies and the spaces digital communities create today. She is specifically interested in hierarchy, in different ways that purity exists both in religious structures, in religious rituals, as well as our different ideas of our existence and representation online. She has physical coins that she minted as NFTs. She uses glass as she's thinking about deities, both broken, interpreted, reprinted, and re-imprinted and she uses traditional sculptural forms to elaborate on binaries that she observes in uh, different religious structures, the clean versus the unclean, and its stigma. The works are all unified under a consistent structure of ritual, syntax, and process. And it all culminates in the central sculpture, the stigmatic fountain, where she represents ablution rituals prescribed by various world religions. The project culminates in the central sculpture, the stigmatic fountain. And this is where we really come to her question. Where does the uncleanliness go when we wash it off? The next artists on our tour are Fatima Dulkis and Onur Gokman. Kate and Onur are based in Turkey, and the project they present here, From Goats to Chronicles, is based on research that they started in 2011. The work presented here, From Goats to Chronicles, correlates research that they've started in 2011. Presented in a video essay format, uh, they have brought in the conversations that they've had in the podcast, they brought in the different archival um, uh, material that they've collected over the past years. They've brought in um, 
their own personal experience and narrative in it. The video delves into their research findings on Turkish cultural policy. They trace its history back from pre-Republican era, uh, right after the Ottoman Empire dissolved, and they look at how Turkish institutions position themselves in relation to their counterparts in Europe and the Middle East. Playing off of the genre of a performance lecture, they incorporate in this video a diverse array of archival images and photographs, of historical documents, of uh, voiceovers, as well as different recurring sequences that bring up a feeling of historical nostalgia and resemble the experimenting artist. What you would see in the space is an eight-minute excerpt um, or a draft of their ongoing research and production process. Our next artist is Mona Ayash, who is based in Dubai and was part of the very first Combound residency. This was when we were also trying to figure out how to work, how to support each other in the middle of a global pandemic. In her practice, Mona has always been interested in the minutia of physical movement. She started by pulling found footage of Olympic athletes and zooming in on very, very small motions. As her process developed, she started to work more and more with collaborators. The questions that we faced in 2020 is how can we work together and collaborate on something that is so intuitive and so much about the body um, as physical movement while we were all uh, practicing social distancing. This is something that Muna really took head on and um, worked with five collaborators remotely. Um, what this also meant for her in her practice is she had to really plan the authorship of the work. Um, the participants really had a lot of um, say in the footage that was taken. They no longer were just performers, but really truly became collaborators. The next project is by N.G. Mohsen, who is an artist with a background in architecture and design. In N.G.'s larger practice, she's very interested in uh, processes of collaboration, of collectivity, of socially engaged practices, and um, wider community engagement. In this particular project, she has reached out to multiple different colleagues, friends, fellow artists and creators to work together on a series of games, um, mostly board games, that address the idea of love as a wider concept. The project, titled How to Love Many in Many Ways, really emphasizes the uh, gestures or the different questions that one might ask to arrive at a broader understanding of love. Not just as love between two people, but actually love within oneself, love within one's community, and then love also to other non-human companions and objects. Our next artist is Salim Suwebi, who is based in Abu Dhabi and was part of the latest Homebound Residency Edition with curatorial support from Sarah bin Safwan. Salim's research um, has always been focused on uh, delving into youth and urbanity in the specific context of Abu Dhabi and the UAE. In this particular project, Salim surveys institutionalized as well as non-institutionalized and spontaneous instances of public art in the city. Combining material from his field research with different community source uh, thoughts and opinions and memories of various interactions with uh, public art in the city, the installation presents multiple layers of engagement with public art in the UAE. He combines findings from his field research with uh, community source memories, thoughts, and reflections of uh, engagements with public art in Abu Dhabi. Um, he has multiple different scene workshops where he asks the question, what would you say to a monument? What, would you, uh, what do you remember of monuments and what makes public art? 
The installation also includes a draft of a manifesto for public art. This is where Simon delves into the very different processes, both bureaucratic and creative, of making public art. This is where he critiques and envisions a way forward towards a much more inclusive and engaging cityscape for our youth. Our next artist is Roger Mokbel, who is based between Beirut and South Africa and was part of our latest uh, homebound residency curated by uh, Sarah Benchakwan. During the residency, Roger was very interested in delving into the parallels between personal grief, which he experienced after the loss of his father, and the larger, more collective experience of ecological food. He was particularly focused on a derelict dam um, on the outskirts of the city of Beirut that has fallen into disrepair for various reasons. A series of photographs culminates in an oral performance that he first devised for an intimate memorial held on the anniversary of his father's passing. The video performance invites audiences not only to reflect on their own personal experiences of loss and grief, but to also connect it to a larger, more collective one, as we all live through the loss of our natural environment. Our next artist is Baria Studio, who are occupying um, our central courtyard with an immersive sound piece. Baria is made up of Pratyush Pushkar and Ria Ragini, based in New Delhi. And in this particular project, they've set out to map the whole of the city of New Delhi sonically. Covering more than 100 kilometers of recording walks, we end up with what Baria calls a nightmarish kind of natural entity in their recording. The installation gives the audience a chance to experience an ambience of the city's mega structures, as well as dive into our different listening stations to visit specific poetic spots of the city of New Delhi. Our next artists are Kimia Collective, made up of Shaheen Falahi and Qayt Ayuj. Shaheen Falahi is based between Casablanca and London, while Qayt is between Casablanca and Paris. They were both uh, part of our latest Hobbound residency with Sarah and Safwan, and they were really interested in looking at the impact of real estate speculation and the purchasing of unfinished buildings in Casablanca on its local community. In this project, Concrete Utopia, Pina Collective worked with uh, children from the Association of Shabab and Wood to think about their experience in the shifting urban landscape, but also to start to envision alternative narratives to the relationship to this. Here we have a work by Mashid Rafay. Mashid is based in Dubai and was part of our very first homebound residency cohort. And she's always been interested in the uh, dichotomies between the origin and the replica. During the residency, she did a lot of research on our uh, geographical context, which was named by the French colonial forces the Pirate uh, Coast. Uh, she dug really deep into the process of naming and how it is a manifestation um, of. Uh, us projecting our understanding of the reality. Uh, about a year after the residency, Masha was able to develop her project further in one of our other programs um, and work towards a solo exhibition titled um, Of Mythic Proportions. The piece we have here was envisioned first during the residency and then produced for her uh, solo exhibition. The piece Cora is a spherical mirror that has its reflective surface on the inside while it's um, matte backing uh, paint mm -hmm. on the outside. Uh, what the piece does is really ask the audience uh, to think about the effect of our imagination onto reality. This next space houses uh, two pieces by the artist uh, Yara Asmar. 
Uh, Yada Asmar is a musician, an artist, and a puppeteer based in Beirut. Uh, she was part of the latest Homebound Residency edition with curatorial support from Sara Bin Safwan. Uh, in the two pieces, Lapses and I Liked It Better When We Lived on Seesaw Hill, Yara reflects on death and mourning. She pulls from funerary traditions and thinks about what remains of the people after all this time. She reflects on funerary traditions and thinks about what remains of those traditions after all this time and how solitary mourning can be um, and how can it be made less solitary through digital spaces that we build together. In the work, she uses sonic and visual explorations of memory. Um, she thinks about how memory can survive through fragments and loops suspended in time. In the piece Lapses, you have conversations on what it means to stay, to outlive, to remember, and to find common ground in mourning and memory recorded on analog cassette tapes. These tapes are modified to play in loops, and the audience is invited to put them into the recorders, to remove them, to really create their own uh, a customized composition of these very precious memories um, and witness as throughout the exhibition uh, the cassettes deteriorate and just as memory does um, the information recorded on them uh, slowly fades out. Our next artist is Nihal Faizal. Nihal was part of the second cohort of the Homebound Residency and worked closely with Reem Shahid. In the residency, Nihal wanted to dive back into a piece that he worked on in 2017 where he really pulled in uh, a lot of archival material and um, a lot of recorded conversations with his uncle who ran a fan blog for a popular musician, Hamad Rafi. The video of Hamad Rafi's fan blog has been shown in multiple different places but during the residency what he has did is he really delved into the source material that he has. Um, he thought a lot about what else can this research uh, be shared as. Uh, he tested out different installations, uh, different types of uh, uh, setups for showcasing the video, for uh, accompanying the video, and also for listening without the video. What we end up with in the exhibition is a publication or an artist book titled Hamara Forums Legend Muhammad Rafi Members. In this publication, Mikhail assembles information about all the members active on Muhammad Rafi's pages. These include uh, Mikhail's uncle. And despite the forum's waning popularity, which of course now um, all forums have been replaced by newer social media platforms, um, it still remains a repository of collective fandom. Um, uh, something really that was cultivated and shared uh, across various communities uh, in the early days of the internet. With this publication, Mihal archives this digital space, its online community, and its reverence for Muhammad Rafi. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of network culture. Thank you for joining along and hope to see you at 41 soon.